Well, hello everybody. It's Chris for Neiman back for another video. This one today, um, I want to share with you my visit to the local sewing machine repairman. And um, I gave him a couple questions that I saw on the sewing groups from a lot of you newbies who have bought in those brother um, computer machines, the ones that have no aluminum frame inside. One of the girls was telling me that She's getting a funny smell from inside. And he started laughing. He goes, yep. He goes, I got a couple of those people that came in with those machines. He says, they thought they were like, uh, yeah, look what I got. This great computer sewing machine by brother from Walmart for $200. But it makes it's making a funny smell. And he opened it up. He goes, where's the freaking frame? There's no aluminum frame for this machine. And this part here, this motor and all this is overheating. And it's, it's sitting against the plastic. And it's melting the plastic, and that's where the, the smell's coming from. He goes, I told him, I'm not touching it. I'm not fixing that. He said, it's not worth it. So anyway, let me go back here. I had three machines that I had taken for maintenance. And one of them, um, I'll, I'll go into deal about more of what the other one needed to do. But I took him in. You can see him sitting there. All right, so now this is my – I took two brother ULTs in that I own to have their annual biannual maintenance done on them. And then I had a Deco 500 that I bought in 1997 that had to go in for some major surgery, which I'll get to that in a second. Now this is, as you can see, the inside of the Brother ULT. And you can see the all aluminum metal frame in there. And everything is attached to that aluminum frame. Now I did some videos that I have on my YouTube channel that explain and show you um, what I have links to other people's videos that show you the inside of those $200 computer machines that people are buying from from Walmart and Amazon and all the other places where they have no aluminum frame inside and um, like I said one of the girls on the sewing groups was complaining about a funny smell coming from inside her cheap inexpensive brother computerized machine and Brian laughed and he said, it's melting. He said, it's overheating and it's melting on the plastic because everything's connected to the plastic. He said, nothing is connected to an aluminum frame. And he said, the only real um, brother machine out there from the big box stores that has an aluminum frame is the sewing and embroidery machine, the Brother SE625. He said, have you seen that machine? I said, oh, Brian, I've seen that machine. I almost bought one just because I want to buy one just to have it. He goes, I got one for my wife. He goes, and I took it apart. He goes, all aluminum frame. It's really well made. Real, really well made. He said, I can't believe they're only selling it for $380 from Walmart. And he goes, have you seen what they're selling it for now on Amazon and on eBay? I said, yeah, 700 bucks. He goes, yeah. He goes, I said, that's because people bought them during right in the beginning of the pandemic. They, they wiped out Walmart, and now they're selling these machines on eBay and everything, and they jacked up the price so high, it's highway robbery. So keep that in mind, everybody. All right, now look here. So here's another picture. Look at that aluminum, all that aluminum frame. A lot of you on the sewing groups hear me preach about it. I say, when you go to buy machines, say, what's the best machine to get? What's this to get? You want a machine that's an all aluminum frame. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. You've got to go to your local sewing machine dealers to buy your machines. You can get a former top-of-the-line machine that's now used from your dealer and they're great machines great machines now this machine one uh, I have two ULTs one was came out in 2001 and the other one came out in 2003 and they're both working very very good for me today very good all right you can see him working on it there he is there being very safe I got to sit and chat with him excuse me I had my um I had uh, my mask on. I stayed six feet away from him. You can see down here he's got his can of Lysol. He's got his sanitation wipes here. And uh, his wife called him. He was talking on the phone with his wife. But I stayed six feet away from him while he was working on the machine. And he said, yeah, you can stay in chat, but don't get near me. And his wife is a nurse. And, um, you know, I told him, I said, I'm a hairdresser. I've got to stay away from people. And I wore my mask like I always do when I'm out in public. So you can still socialize, guys. You just have to be safe when you're out there. And uh, there we go. Let's get a picture. See, I was zooming in from way back there to try and get a close-up picture for you guys because I didn't want to get near him. But I wanted you to see all this aluminum framing in there. 
there's the back of the machine as he's taking everything apart looking at everything and here he is with his magnifying glass looking at fine detail and he says to me he goes you got a burr on your bobbin case and you've got a burr on your throat plate i'm like oh man i said well that wasn't me because this machine the, the 2003 model that i have i said um i bought that that's my most recent machine i bought used from my local sewing machine dealer so the people before it probably had it he goes well i'm surprised he said that um the repair guy didn't see the burrs and burn you know file them out for you but um he said this is a really good running machine it's like brand new i said i know right okay now let's go to this one guys this one here is my bernina deco 500. bernina made another line called burnett and burnett by bernina they have different companies making the burnett models so Bernina really doesn't make it. This is a brother machine where Bernina slapped their, na their name on it, okay? Look at this all aluminum metal frame inside. Why did I take this machine into him? Well, it needed its yearly tune-up, but my screen died on it. And remember, I bought this in 1997, and I've been using it since, and the screen had died on it. And I called him and I said, do you have a screen for that? He goes, they don't make screens or boards anymore. I said, but I had a lady that brought a trade in and he said, I can give you her board and her screen, replace it and put it in yours. I said, well, that'll work. It'll give me a little longer longevity. But this was the front cover and this is where the screen is attached to. So he had to take that apart for me and replaced it and grant you the screen is not as bright as if it was brand new but it'll get me longer than what i have now so here he is taking all apart all this gray that you see my friends that's all metal that is all metal and you newbies when you hear me talking about finding a machine with an all metal frame the reason for that is that machine's going to last you it's going to last you here it is look at this it's like a tank look at this this gray is like an armor tank Look at that. When people say that they don't make machines like they used to, what they're saying is these machines are made very well. It's the electronics that don't last. And I have a pet peeve with these sewing machine companies. Instead of replacing and making these boards and these screens so the customer can say, hey, I have a well-built machine, but my screen died and my main board died. I could buy a new board and a new screen and have my repairman put it in so I can still use this machine and prevent having to add it to the landfills, to the, to the landfalls. You know, it's like these corporations keep making new, new, new throwaway. There was a program produced by Canada CBC where they did an investigation of all these consumer products refrigerators, dishwashers, ovens, where people buy these appliances and after five years, they died on them. So they go to the website of these companies and they're showing that the parts, you can order the part, but it keeps showing out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Well, guess what? The companies are not manufacturing replacement parts anymore for a five-year-old appliance. I'll try to find that video I saw on YouTube and I'll link it below this video here on YouTube so you can watch that that show. It was fascinating. There is one country that has taken a stance and they made a new law, which I believe comes out this year. And what it's telling people to do is uh, what it's what it's basically the law is about, if I remember correctly, is if a company doesn't produce the replacement part for up to 10 years, I think it is that company has to replace that consumer appliance free of charge that's what that's how it should be seriously it's how it should be look at that beautiful armor look at that just beautiful just beautiful okay now i want you to notice over here see see my little arrow to the right here here the right of the machine see that red that's a spool of guess what brand thread that is coats 
dual duty. When he tests sewing machines, he uses the dual duty. And he's got a spool cap. I know a lot of you don't understand spool caps. A lot of you say, I don't use spool caps. But, and a lot of you say, my dealer told me not to use dual duty, blah, 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 blah. And it's like Brian says, Chris, when I had my business, I didn't carry dual duty because Walmart and everybody else carried it. He said, so I carried other brands to sell. He said, but there's nothing wrong with this thread. I said, I know that, Brian. I know that. So I wanted you guys to see that. And uh, all right, so I got a couple of videos I want to show you, and then I'll end this video after that. Um, so let's move on. Okay, so here is the Bernina Deco 500. Now that it's all put together, and let me turn it on for you. As you can see, the screen is not very bright. That's the way it was. That's what happens over time. These screens get darker. But uh, let me see. Let me see what I can do here. All right, so let's just do a frame pattern. I'm going to choose this circle. And then what kind of design do I want? Let's just do something that's here already. Let's just do this. Okay. And see, then I can do layout. And layout here. And then I can do a trace. So in my previous video, I was showing you my Janome 9000. And this machine came out... Mm, I bought this machine in 1997. So it was already... I think maybe a year or two it came out already. So it, it came out around the time that Janome brought theirs out, I believe. So here's the trial. Like the newer machines all do today. This does a 4x4 four four hoop. And then it had a repositionable hoop where you can do uh, make your designs continuous. Which was really nice. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to go back to... And you could do where you could say start or center. So you could see I have this starting in the center here. So I can see where it's going to be. Okay? And then I'll go back to trial. And then I'll go back to return. And now I'll hit start. And then after I hit start, I want to hold on to my thread here. Oh, something I wanted to show you. Um, if I, I'm going to lift a foot. If I forget to put the foot down, watch what happens. See, it beeps on you. And that's one thing that the Janome did not do. Now, I understand maybe um, a couple years when they produced more Janome MC9000s that they may have added that beep. Because I saw a video online where a lady had an MC9000 that she was selling. And when she was demoing it on video, she went to put the foot down. And before she put the foot down, it was still up. And she went to press start, and it beeped at her. And I'm like, well, that's odd, because I have a 9000 that doesn't do that. So I might have one of the first run 9000s where they didn't include that sensor. But um, this Brother machine did. Now, let me explain to you. This is made by Brother, okay? But this was actually sold by Bernina under Burnett Deco 500. But this is actually a baby lock, I'm sorry, a Brother-made machine. And... You can see how old it is because the screen is so dark. You know, the screen is so dark. And, uh, but that's the way it is. You know, that's what I was explaining is that these machines are built so well, but the screens are fading and they're not making the screens no more. So they just want you to use this as a doorstop when the computer board goes completely. Um, and it's really sad because these corporations are contributing to the massive amount of debris and pollution um, and landfills just for the almighty buck. Now, if they want to do stuff, you know what they can do? Since these machines are still great and they still work so well, they should go and manufacture these boards and stuff so these machines can keep going. Because as I showed you in my photos, the whole interior is still built so well. It's like people say, they don't make singers like they used to. When you take apart a singer and you see all that metal frame and everything, as I showed you, this has the same thing. But corporations, they are destroying the world. They really are. They are destroying the world because they're forcing you to buy new and throw out the old. And where does the old go? In the landfill. Isn't that sad? 
So I'm going to sell this out. Let me stop and I got to cut my thread so I got to put the camera down and then I'll show you a little bit of this sewing. Now this machine only stitched out about 350 stitches a minute. And this is an embroidery only machine. Alright, so we'll come back after this is done. Okay, so now it's done. There's the circle. Isn't that pretty? Stitch quality is beautiful in this. Alright, so now we're going to get out of here. We're going to go to pattern. Uh, no, I'm going to go to alphabet. So I'm going to go to alphabet. I'm going to go here and I'm going to do a C for Chris. And it is a large. And then I'm going to go to layout. Layout. I'm going to go trial and C. I like it. So, now, let me pull some, th oh, I gotta trim the thread. Forgot to trim my thread. And that's another thing these old machines didn't do was trim the jump threads. But that's only something you can find in a more higher end brand machine. Alright, so let me hit the start button. And then stop, I'll cut the thread. And then I'll, we'll keep going. So, um, this machine is great for doing little patches, doing little embroidery for your pocket and your shirts and stuff. This, this was great for the time that introduced people to embroidery. Now, here's the strange thing is, this machine, I paid $1,100 for it in 1997. You can get a combo sewing and embroidery, the Brother SE625, from Walmart for $385 before this pandemic and before everyone bought them on Walmart and then the people bought them out on Walmart and they're selling them on eBay for like $700 highway robbery man highway robbery and before the pandemic it had gone on sale for $320 and it has a beautiful touchscreen color touchscreen with beautiful editing and everything so you can see that this machine is on its last leg. You know, it's not going to be around much longer, which is sad because, I mean, look at the beautiful condition I keep it in. I always take care of my machines. And um, you saw the interior of this machine and how beautiful it is. And I, keep, I hate to keep sounding like a broken record, but if any of the corporations are listening to me, shame on you for not providing parts. There was a, a link to a Canadian show where people's appliances are shown they're breaking after seven years and they, you, they go to the corporate websites and they said oh you could buy like this compressor it needs a new compressor and you go there and it was always showing out of stock out of stock out of stock well after a couple years these companies are stopped making parts for these machines like this one but this is like after just a few years and they're forcing you to buy another new refrigerator or another new dishwasher so the CBC who is doing this and the people part of it, they went to Washington DC and met with someone ahead of consumer sales products and stuff. And she says, well, our, our statistics show that appliances last 10 years. So there's this uh, country either in, I can't remember, Sweden, Switzerland, somewhere, Norway, one of those countries that have this new law that goes into effect, I think this year, that if parts are not available, I think, I have to rewatch again, but if parts are not available after like five or seven years, uh, I think they're making the corporations replace the, the product with a brand new one. And that's what corporations should do. If they don't want to make replacement parts for the next 15 years, I say 15 years, guys, I'm being, I'm being generous to these companies. 15 years, you have to make a part to replace this, these machines, appliances. 
And if you can't provide a part for up to 15 years after production of, this, of these machines, then you need to replace these machines at your expense. There it is. Isn't that nice? Nice stitching. And that is sulky thread. Sulky embroidery thread. Isn't that beautiful? All right. I don't want to keep talking because you know I can keep preaching, but I wanted to give you an insight of history, corporations, products, and um, I'm, like I said, I want you guys online watching this, be careful about those entry level machines, those computerized machines by brother that only cost a couple hundred dollars um, because they don't have that all aluminum frame inside. And my repairman told me, he said, they're heating up inside with that plastic and they're melting a gear in there or something and he said he's had a couple of them come to him just recently and he looked at him and he said really he said this is what you bought he goes I'm not touching it I am not touching it he said you got all plastic in here there's no aluminum frame he said it's a joke it's a real joke the consumers are getting ripped off okay so this is my ULT 2003 by Brother, the 2003D, which stands for Disney. This is the one I just brought home from my repairman. He did the tune-up on it. Um, I hadn't had anything done to this since I bought it from the other re uh, dealer that retired. And uh, when I tell you newbies to go to your local sewing machine dealer, you can find amazing deals. I'm not kidding you. Now, you're not going to believe what I paid for this. Okay, now remember, this is a 2003 version of the Brother ULT Disney version. It's a, it's a combination sewing and embroidery. It does like 6x10 size hoop, beautiful sewing. Um, it's got all these built-in Disney designs. I paid $450 for this machine from my local dealer. You guys can find great machines. Save your money. When you make those masks, I know a lot of you bought those cheap, cheap, cheap machines online to make masks and you're trying to make a little money. Go ahead and break those machines because that's what you're doing out there. You don't, a lot of you are having issues. You know, you didn't get lessons because you bought it online. Um, I see you on the sewing groups. You know, you're not reading your manuals. You're not watching videos. You're all having the same issues where you're getting a, a nest of thread underneath. And it's because you're not you're not threading properly and all that is in this instruction manual it shows you all that is um, in the videos if you just take your time but a lot of you are too much in a hurry now let me explain some to you and I'm very passionate about this when I tell you if you go to a local sewing machine dealer to buy a machine whether it's new or used they will give you a machine operation lesson so you don't have all those issues when you're posting online what's wrong with my machine what's this why is it doing that okay look how beautiful this machine is my my repairman said this is like brand new now the reason why i took this to him is to have it tuned up because it's been almost a year since i've had it and also for him to adjust the sensor of the bobbin because the bobbin was sensing that it was out of bobbin with up to a quarter of a thread a quarter of a spool of thread yeah oh, my battery had run out so i had to s stop and change the battery um so what was i saying oh yeah so the bobbin um when you had a quarter of a bobbin left it would sense it and say almost out of bobbin he did tell me that this generation of machines they did have an issue with that and they tried to adjust it the best they can and everybody was complaining about that that you know when you had a quarter of a bobbin left an icon would come up on the screen and say almost out of bobbin so uh other than that that's the only problem this generation of machines had but this is a great machine very great machine so when i say to you guys go to your local dealer see what they've got they've got lots of used machines and they'll give you a guarantee on it you know, it may be 30, 60, 90 days. Some may give you six months. You need to check. But the best thing, guys, for you newbies is they will give you a machine operation lesson so you don't have to be all frantic at home. Why is my machine, why is all this thread under here? Why is it jamming inside the bobbin? You know, other than here, why this and why that? So, yeah, those machines that you bought, those cheap machines that you bought, oh, oh, my God, some of them, don't even have a plastic they don't even have a an aluminum frame inside 
And my dealer was telling me, I don't know if, I repeat it, if I'm repeating this or not, he said a couple people brought him these machines. These like $200 machines, brother machines, they're all computerized. He opened them up, he goes, where the hell is aluminum frame? There's no aluminum frame. And their complaint was, it was smelling like it was burning. And he goes, well, it's getting so hot in there, and there's no aluminum frame, that it's, it's getting hot against the plastic, and that's what's making it smell. I know one of the girls on sewing, beginner sewing group, she had said something about that happening on her machine. And I, 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 tra I told her, go to Tops and get a, get a new machine. But anyway, or, or look for a used machine. So anyway, yeah, let me just do a quick stitch here to show you guys. And this has got a knee lifter. Isn't that nice? My God, once you sew with a knee lifter, you'll never go back to not having one. You'll never want a machine that doesn't have one. So just let me do a test sew here. Uh, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Now this embroidery I did, this was some, um, I just used this piece of fabric. This was from my Janome. I was testing on my Janome. I did a video on my Janome the other day that's online. You can watch. Um, it was this machine right here. See? All right. So, I can't encourage you enough. Visit your local sewing machine dealers. See what used machines they have. And keep going back and looking and tell them, hey, if you get something in, let me know. Make friends with your local sewing machine dealers. The guy who fixes my machine, he used to be a dealer. And he sold his business a while back. And he's been, he's been maintaining my, all my machines for 15 years. And we have formed a nice friendship. In fact, I went there today. I brought three machines to him. And I sat six feet away with my mask on. And I was able to have a conversation with him and enjoy his company. During this lockdown, this pandemic, you can still enjoy your time with people. Just be safe, everybody. Keep your distance, you know. Um, and he took his mask off because he was working on the machine. He goes, look it. I got to take this mask off because I get my face in here. I said, I understand. I said, I'm sitting back here. No big deal. And then... When he wanted to talk to me and face me, he would put his mask back on and talk to me. We were safe. So you're still able to have socialization, my friends. Just got to do it safely. You know what I'm saying? All right, so go, go to your local dealer, ladies and gents. See what they got. See what they got. And just keep visiting your dealers because there's always those rich women who trade in their machines for the latest, biggest, and greatest, and they trade in their old ones. So there's always some grandma that's got a big fat check in the bank or something and she's buying a, the newest machine then there's nothing wrong with her old machine. She just wants the newest, latest and greatest. So you guys get to benefit from it just like I do. Alright, take care. Until my next video, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.